Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad and today we're going to be discussing a new feature within .NET 8 which is HTTP request timeout. We're going to be seeing how we can actually implement timeouts on our call in order for us to protect our API and give the user a better user experience. So let's get started. In this diagram here, what do we have? We have a simple request response to our API where a request comes in, it goes to the action, the action executes whatever is needed and then we return back a response. So a normal lifespan of this request response is usually gonna be less than 200 milliseconds. So we can say a maximum of a 200 ms and this is where really stretch, uh, stretching it out. But let's say for any reason, our action is relying on some kind of a service. This service is taking some time and we're basically returning back the response within this uh, lifespan. So what happened here, if for any reason our request request goes more than a second long. So our acceptable delay or basically our acceptable lifespan is 200 milliseconds. What happens if, for example, our time frame goes from 200 milliseconds to one second plus? What's going to happen there? In case it actually goes to that, what we want to do is we want to cut off the connection and basically send a request timeout. So the user here will be able to retry again and will be able to actually lock this event that something went wrong and will be able to actually understand why it's taking so long. Because basically this service one here, it could be reading from the database and the query could be very big or it could be relying on a third party service where we're doing another HTTP call and that service is delayed. So for example, this could be connected to a different API and basically this API is taking so much time. So we're basically, we're chaining different requests together and we're basically delaying the original request. So there is a lot of different stuff that can happen here. So what we want to do today is in case this request comes into the action and this action it takes more than one second we want to basically cut off the request and send basically request time out back to the user so they will be able to retry later on rather than keeping this connection open and using more resources on our machine and basically provide bad user experience to the rest so how can we actually accomplish it within dotnet 8 it's going to be pretty straightforward so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a random service and then just so we can mimic this and then we're going to be seeing how we can actually implement this through the actions. So let's get started. Now that we have Rider open. Okay, so now here what I have is my normal CRUD operation uh, or basically CRUD application that I have before. We have basically a normal API where it contains two controllers, a drivers and achievement. I have a full the CRUD operation here for it. For the drivers, I have a full CRUD operation for the achievements. If you want to see how we build this, I'll link the video here somewhere where you'll be able to actually go through it and see how we can how we build this step by step. We're using SQLite as a database. So what we're going to be doing here in order for us to get started, I'm going to be creating a new new folder inside my application. I'm going to call this services. And within the services, I'm going to be creating first an interface. So I'm going to call this uh, driver service. And within here, it's going to be an interface of a class. Within here, I'm going to have a very simple one method operation, which is going to return a list of drivers. So I'm going to put task. Let's take exactly what we're doing from here and we can update it. I'm going to return an IAM removable of get driver response. Perfect. Uh, let's fix this references. And I'm gonna call this get driver async and I'm gonna pass here a cancellation token in order for me to be able to cancel this anytime that I want. Then once I have done this, I'm gonna create another class and this class I'm gonna call it driver service. And this driver service is gonna implement the interface, I driver service, and we can see here it's already start to complain. So we need to implement the same method as before. And I'm gonna make this async. And what I wanna do here is I wanna actually utilize my DB context. So I'm just gonna copy paste my initializations for it. And then I'll adjust it there. Because we're using unit of work, I can directly just implement this here. I'm just gonna add them. I'm gonna switch this from protected to private. And we're gonna update the class name. So now that I have here is basically I have initialized my unit of work. I have my uh, unit, my uh, my mapper in order for me to convert the objects, and I have my method here. So what I want to do is in order for me to mimic some kind of a delay, I want to utilize some kind of an action. I want to create a fake delay inside my uh, method here, so I can, for example, say this method is going to be delayed for like four or five seconds. So in order for me to do that, I'm just going to put await task dot delay, and I'm going to delay it for let's say four thousand milliseconds, which is going be four seconds and i'm gonna pass the cancellation token that i have so once i have done that uh, then what i want to do is i want to basically do the normal crud operation so i'm gonna put var drivers equal await underscore unit of work dot drivers dot get all drivers or all and now that i have got my drivers i can basically just do the mapping so i'm gonna put var final drivers for example underscore mapper dot 
map i'm gonna be mapped to i enumerable of get driver response and then i'm gonna take my drivers as an input and once if everything goes to plan i'm just gonna return my final drivers so now that i have this this is gonna be my service who's gonna be responsible for getting me my drivers we can see here that i have my delay and here i have my drivers implemented so what i want to do right now i'm gonna go to my program.cs and i want to inject my service here so inside uh, next to the unit of work i'm gonna put the i driver service and i'm gonna inject it here as well the driver service so now what we're gonna do is i'm gonna execute this see how it actually runs and then once i have done that i'm gonna actually go back and actually implement the timeout so now i'm gonna run this i'm gonna go to postman and within postman i'm just gonna do a send request and we can see we got it and this is i just remembered we did not map it back to the controller so let's map it to the controller so here what i want to do is i'm just gonna inject my service so i'm gonna put private i driver service underscore driver service and let's initialize it through the constructor okay perfect let's just put this on a new line so it's easier for us to see okay perfect and what i want to do here right now inside my get all drivers instead of relying on this i'm just gonna put driver service to get async and what i want to do here is i want to pass my cancellation token and this is going to be the http contacts dot abort requested abort which is going to be a cancellation token so now that i have this in place i'm just going to await this i'm going to return drivers rather than doing the mapping again because we already done so so now this is all it's the final version of my action so now i go back here if i execute we should be able to wait for like four seconds plus in order for me to get my time out and we can see here i waited for five seconds uh, 0.16 in order for me to get my response if i try to do it again we'll have to go through the delay for five seconds four seconds plus in order for me to get my information so this is not ideal to wait all this time so now let us see how we can implement the request timeout so the first thing that i want to do in order for me to do this i'm going to go to my program .cs and what I want to do here is I'm gonna add builder.services.add request timeout and this is right now as soon as I added this what I'm adding is I'm adding my request timeout services into my pipeline in order for ASP.NET to know that I want to use this and to me for me to use this I did not install any new packages I did not configure install anything else or and, and utilize any different library all of this comes out of the box so now that I have added this here what I want to do right now is I want to inject this into my middleware in order for me to be able to utilize it so I'm going to put app timeout use request timeouts and once I do this it will be able to automatically be available for me so as we can see here i have my request timeout inside my middleware and now what i want to do is i'm going to go back to my controller wherever i'm using my service here and i'm going to specify what is the timeout amount that i want so i can put http or actually i can put timeout request timeout and i can specify the amount of time i can make it as 500 milliseconds for example or i can make it 1000 which is going to be one second and now what i want to do i'm going to run my application again and if i go back to postman click on send and now we should see it to be after like 100 after one second of execution i directly got that this is a request timeout and as you can see here i just added the three lines one line two lines in the program.cs and one line inside the action wherever it needs to be in order for me to get my request timeout available and we can see here the request that i got back which is going to be a server is acting as a gateway or a proxy did not receive a timely response which means that my application itself cut down the request because it was taking so much more time more than one second that's allocated for it and basically i got my 504 return back to me and as we can see here i got this uh, this uh, error here because basically it stopped the cancellation token interfered and it and the task was directly cancelled because my request has timed out and we can see here the power of this so right now i put it as 1000 milliseconds i can change it to five uh, to 500 seconds for example and now if i run this again if i go back now we should see this less than one second and we can see here now i got this as 842 milliseconds because it already passed the 500 milliseconds that i have allocated for it which is great so now i have my basic uh timeout functionality working and i have my basic implementation in place let's see how we can push this a bit further by actually creating some rules so before we do any of that we can see here that my request timeout i can allocate it to an action as we can have here i can actually allocate it to the full uh, controller by itself so i can add it on this uh, here so this means that any action within this controller will also have a 500 millisecond request timeout so we can see the power of a uh, timeout is not only going to be limited to a single action so another thing we can actually do here is if i go back to my 
my program.cs is I can actually expand more on this request timeout and uh, service here by providing a much more configuration. So we're going to be seeing two different configurations that we can give and actually how we can utilize it. So let me stop my application. So what I'm going to do here is put options. So I'm going to put opt and then specify my options. I'm going to put opt.default policy and I'm going to say equal new request policy timeout. And here I'm able to specify different configurations. So the first one, it could be the timeout span. So I can say the timeout span, it could be like 5,000 milliseconds. So I'm, I can put time span from, let's say, milliseconds and I can specify like 1,000 milliseconds. And I can put the other one, which is the timeout status code that I want to utilize. So I can utilize and HTTP status code dot, for example, I can put bad request or anything that I want. So this could be one of the other items that I can actually specify here. And if I want to specify a different timeout option, what I want to do, is, what I can do as well here is options dot add policy. I can specify the policy name, which is going to be, let's say more than two seconds. And then I can specify here the request timeout policy that I want or the time span. So I can utilize time span from milliseconds. And I can specify 2000 milliseconds. And now here, what I have here is I have a default policy and I have another policy which is going to be executed after 200 milliseconds or two seconds and i can just copy this policy name and what i can do here i can go back to drivers and i'm going to execute this directly on my request so rather than specifying here and hard coding 500 milliseconds i'm going to remove the 500 and i'm going to put my policy name that's needed and now if i execute this we can see this will actually execute after two seconds rather than the 500 milliseconds so if i go back to postman right now and i execute this we can see it waited two seconds and then it gave me my request timeout okay perfect so here we were able to see how easy it is to implement request timeout inside our .NET not eight web APIs, how easy it is to manage the lifespan of a request. This is going to be a very powerful tool in order for us to manage all of the third parties dependencies if we're, if we're actually integrating within our API to any of those third parties. If you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. If you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. With that said, I hope this video was helpful. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.